All right, we are live. Welcome, welcome, welcome indeed. Thank you for tuning in for today's live episode of the Rice Crypto Show. Doing a collaboration with my brother from another mother, Mr. Crypto Blood. I'm streaming on my Rumble YouTube channel, my X account. Blood is streaming over on his X account and his YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to both of our channels. Links are down below in the video description. And today we are joined by Jordan from Waters Above. Make sure you guys take an opportunity to smash that like button. And before we begin, a few quick messages from the channel and our sponsors for both Rice Crypto and CBTV. I love crypto. Don't forget to visit RiceTVX.com, where you can watch both of my YouTube channels, Rice Crypto and Rice Against the Grain, directly. Find all of my social media links, sign up for my mailing list, and become a member of Rice Uncensored where you can join me on the private side for less than a quarter a day. You will get early access to both Rice Crypto and Rice Against the Grain, ad-free, unedited videos, exclusive content, members-only forum with direct access to me, live streams, and more to come only at RiceTVX.com. Make sure you take an opportunity wherever you are watching to smash that like button. This episode is brought to you by Fairdesk, a crypto derivatives trading platform founded by six former Binance execs and three former Morgan Stanley architects. Fairdesk is a company focused on building a platform that enables traders to profit from both rising and falling markets. Sign up today and CB will credit you up to $600 in trading funds. For more information, visit Fairdesk.com. Link in the description below. Holla. All right, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we're going to go and get this thing going. What's up, my brother from another mother, Crypto Blood? How are you doing, my friend? I'm good, baby. We're here. You got, you're got torturing me here, Rice. You're torturing me. What, because it's 10 a.m.? Yes. <laughs> well, we can thank our beautiful guest, Jordan, for that. Um, <laughs> but it's all good. It's all good. I, I've been getting woken up at like 8, 8.30 in the morning anyways from this construction crew that's outside of my, how, my, still, my window. Still, you're still yeah. squabbling with them? Still fighting with them? No, I've given up on that. It's oh, just okay. Wa wa okay. Wasted, wasted energy at this point. So uh, I do appreciate everybody taking the time to tune in. We're going to have links down below for all three of our channels. So make sure you subscribe as well as Water Above if you're not already. So without further ado, this is the first time that Blood and Jordan uh, from yes. Waters Above are going to have a conversation together. So Jordan, welcome to the show. Feel free to unmute yourself. We appreciate you joining us, my friend. Yeah, I'm grateful to have have you introduced me uh, to Crypto Blood? I appreciate you for uh, taking some time, having me on, and it's all love. Well, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it, man, because, I mean, you definitely bring an interesting perspective. And, and Blood's been uh, checking out some of the interviews that you've done with me, and he was really impressed by the last conversation that we had, which was... I think taking us, uh, it, it could have been the last conversation or two conversations ago when we were going into the annular solar eclipse, which I believe was in October. And uh, you kind of like hit it right on the money as far as what you were saying, as far as your predictions based off of using your unique skill of combining technical analysis with astrology, numerology, and gematria. So since this is your yeah. first time on uh, Blood's channel, do you mind kind of uh, doing like a a quick introduction as to who Jordan is. Yeah, what we, Water we, is all we about. need an autograph. We need an autograph from this guy, Jordan. I mean, <laughs> I've been talking about you since October, bro. Oh, it, 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 it's, 
I, I need to know where you're getting your your magic from how you're doing it where's the secret sauce we need it but no and all uh all jokes aside definitely we're excited to have you um we've been talking about you as i stated for a few months now because of your call back in october on on rice's channel and so just kind of give us um uh, a little rundown on you know how you got into this you know we want to know the difference between at least i do gematria numerology and astrology and just kind of give us a quick synopsis before we get into uh things today man before before you before you get into that jordan um anything for clicks that this guy is a witch are you a witch or a warlock <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm not i'm not cool enough to be either of those things uh, I'm, I'm pretty boring <laughs> Oh man! Anything you're, you're, for clicks. you're a really interesting guy, man, and I appreciate you, my friend. So oh, that yeah, really means a lot. And, well, and we got your website pulled up, watersabove.com, yep. and then we'll have your YouTube and your X account linked down below as well. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I mean, so just to give a quick rundown of what I'm doing, Rice did a great quick uh, introduction with this. You know, just labeling what I'm about, which is pretty mm -hmm. much a professional technical analyst, professional trader, but the elements that I bring to the table that are a little bit more unique are the esoteric elements. So right. taking things like gematria, which is effectively a alphanumerical cipher system of taking language and applying each letter in that particular language to some sort of number code. And with English, for instance, you'd have A is one, B is two, C is three, and that's the easiest way to explain it. And then you'd have other elements such as numerology okay. and you could do numerology in many different forms. I try to keep things pretty simple. And then I've combined that with basic astrology. So not getting too deep into the astro charts or getting it not as much as what you would maybe see with some other financial astrologers, but kind of my own take on things and what I believe has the most utility regarding astrology and particularly cryptocurrency. So that's, my kind of uh you know unique element that i've added from that has been talking about the lunar cycles the effect that the full moon or the new moon plays on crypto and then the effect that lunar or solar eclipses play on crypto and really just dialing in that and having more awareness of why bitcoin and this crypto market is doing what it does during bull runs and then why it pivots into bear markets and then why it acts the way that it does during bear markets and I've come up with a system that's pretty simple, actually, if you just have an awareness of the solar or lunar eclipses during a particular phase, either that being a solar phase or a lunar phase. And right now we are in a solar cycle. We're in a solar phase, which effectively means all lunar eclipses are weak and all solar eclipses are strong. And that's why if you go back to the first solar eclipse that we had of 2023, which was in April of 2023, you'd see that we rose bullish from the prior lunar eclipse, which was in November 2022, effectively what was what was the Bitcoin bottom. We rose all the way from that directly into April 20th solar eclipse. And then we chopped sideways all the way until the next solar eclipse, which was in October, the last time that I connected with Rice. And then right from that solar eclipse, we pivoted bullish and we went up again. And we could see that these eclipses play pivot points. And then the same thing goes for the start of a bear market. And we have the last uh, bull run ending effectively in May of 2021. And that was in the May solar eclipse. And then what we noticed is every lunar eclipse after that we started to see big rituals on the world stage specifically with crypto for instance we had may of 2023 there was a solar eclipse where we watched terra luna on a lunar eclipse drop effectively to zero no then pun we saw intended there <laughs> <laughs> exactly so that was a moment where a lot more people started taking what i was sharing more seriously Okay. because of how synchronistic that that was right, right and right. then the following lunar eclipse that we had which was in november 2022 was the fall of ftx and the imprisonment of sbf and all of the thing that went down with fdt token so that gives people a little bit of a rundown on, on what i'm doing uh but my channel i try to break it up 
50-50 between the esoteric stuff like gamatra and numerology and astrology and then 50 percent of ta so actually doing real technical analysis talking about the markets using some indicators that i believe will be helpful for people that are either newer or even slightly more advanced and i try to not get too crazy with with the indicators and and going too deep into that kind of stuff because i want to be helpful to those that are open-minded but also people that are trying to gain a skill out of this and if you don't care at all about the esoteric if you think it's all woo woo and you think it's all make believe then fine you have the other 50% of my channel is dedicated to what's going on in the actual charts well i have my mom watch the other 50% <laughs> she she thinks this stuff is is demonic and you know you know how you know how moms and stuff can be but uh so here here's my question bro you fifty, you split it fifty fifty, right? How accurate if we just take your numerology, astrology stuff? Like, how accurate is that by itself? And if it's very accurate, what's the need for the TA part? That's a great question. You know, I got to start this off uh, by being very honest and transparent. That I did not think Bitcoin would break an all time high so soon. Okay. So there's there's definitely times where I get you know where I'm learning. I right. Right. I'm always learning. I love this process of learning. I'm not really. So I like too... this guy. I like this guy, Rice. No, he's good um, people, man. I was definitely um, inaccurate with the idea of where Bitcoin would go this fast, this soon. I thought it would take at least for us to get to the next solar eclipse, which would be in October. Um, between August and October is when I was anticipating all time highs. And now, I mean, technically, our all time highs were only for a couple of days and then we had that correction and now we're sort of right. chopping but right. you asked a great question you know like why even have the ta and i gotta admit the reason why is because i had awareness out of the out of the gate that most people are going to see the gamatria numerology stuff and they're going to go no that's insane like i've been like that my whole life though every time i had my truth and i shared it 99 percent of people would just be like you're out of your mind and i'm right. like okay well if I'll keep moving my way. I'm not worried about what you think. Like I've always been staying on my lane and moving from my truth, operating from my purpose. If people want to think that, you know, I'm just making shit up, then that's cool. Like I'm not trying to convince anyone. I have no desire right. to change people's minds. So I came to this with so many years of study and esoterica that by the mm -hmm. time when I got to crypto, I knew what I was walking into. And we got to be honest and upfront. Most crypto people, like an overwhelming majority, are just degens trying to turn pennies into nickels. Like they don't That's give right. a fuck about financial freedom or they don't care about becoming sovereign or nope. truly wealthy. They don't care about generational wealth. They just want to get in some meme coin, whip around a Lambo, and then give 40% of their money back to the IRS. I thought you were street smart, bro. Yeah, so I'm not, really, I'm not really concerned about, you know, people, people's, uh, you know, um, doubt. But I knew so, that I needed so to come So what would you say, though? What, what would you say as, as far as your hit rate on the esoteric side versus your hit? I mean, you know, we, we all, I do TA. I've been trading for 15, 16 Donut years. real quick, man. Yeah, go ahead. Just uh, want to shout out Donut. Oh, shout out Donut. Oh, I thought you said you wanted to go get a Donut. No, no. no I want to shout out my Donut, <laughs> man. I didn't know donut, what you were talking about. Donut what the is the reason why me and me and Water is even connected to begin with. So, yeah, Oh, much, nice. Much love, Donut. I nice. Appreciate, nice. Appreciate yes, thank you, Donut. Shout out, shout out to the Illuminati Dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just, you know, can you give me a, a, a ballpark? Like, I'm just out of curiosity, right? Because, you know, I've been trading forever. I know that there you know you can be wrong 40 percent or 60 percent 70 even 70 percent of the time and still have a profitable profitable uh trading strategy so i'm just wondering like have you charted or or tracked your accuracy with numerology dramatria and astrology in in the crypto side and also outside of crypto in the traditional markets does you know, it work I the same yeah, you could apply this to anything. You just got to know a couple of things. You got to know okay. the keywords. You also have to know the birthdays or the founding date of a couple things. So like mm. if you were to know when the S&P 500 launched or when the Nasdaq launched or when Tesla Damn, launched Damn, are public, you serious? Yeah, if you want to look at when Coinbase IPO'd, like you could take all this data. You could take the keywords. You could take Ben Armstrong. You could look into Ben Armstrong's birthday. You could line that up. And then you could yeah, start to like Gematria. piece this all together. 
Yeah, the yeah, you can start to piece this all it gets cr- It gets really crazy. Wow, really, so really deep. So that's interesting, bro, because it's almost like it's almost like when we're born, right? We had we're born under a certain moon phase, sun phase, or whatever, right? And it, it's it's kind of is it kind of that same concept? Abs- absolutely. Like everything- oh my god, that's crazy. Yeah, and I'll get to that in a moment. But as for the hit rate, like. I've never kept track of such a thing because my only goal here is to be profitable and I've always been profitable in this market. So I'm not saying that's a flex or brag. It's just, that's always been the way that it is. Like even when Bitcoin recently broke above uh, 50 K I took, I took some profits. I call it de-risking just to give people a basic rundown. Exactly. De-risking means you are taking out the hard earned money that you put into this gambling casino. Yeah. So if you if you started with a with a grand and it goes to ten grand, you should probably take that one grand out, and then the rest just let it ride, right? House money, mm-hmm. house money. So I de-risked my Bitcoin position partially at the forty-seven k mark, and then again at the fifty-four k mark, and then I've been involved in Bitcoin as an active investor since it was below ten k. I have most of my Bitcoin accumulated in my long-term holds uh around eight thousand dollars so some people saw that and they were like well you're taking profits too early and i'm like well first of all my trading plan was profitable second of all i've been in this game for a different time horizon than probably you have third of all i know what i'm doing with my finances i know everything i'm doing with my finances i have a i have a wealth plan not just a trading plan so if i had to if what's the point of having a hit rate if you have a wealth plan (laughs) You have a, a huge time horizon. I think you need to be more caught up in that that sort of stuff if you're playing with leverage, if you're doing lots of active trading, if you're really reliant on trading also, which I had a stage of my life where I was heavily reliant on trading. And I would say in most of those moments, I would use gamatria or numerology to determine where would the conservative levels to de-risk or to take profits on, for instance, an active trade. But a majority of the time, it's just the game of stomach and emotions when you're talking about trading. And that's really where I come from. And with my knowledge and my wisdom and what I'm bringing to the table, you know, I know um, Rice knows this. Like most of the time, I don't even want to talk about trading with people. I want to talk about the emotion. I want to talk about the mindset. I want to talk about investment wisdom because I've seen this happen so many times where people get a 10x and then they roll all that money over into some other shiny object and then they they act, it ends up being a rug pull or they they end up being in the red so they're just chasing the high just like a heroin addict chases the needle and i i want to talk about that stuff more because that's so much more important now i 100% agree with you but at the same time jordan i am like really curious about like what your thoughts are with this eclipse that's going to be happening april 8th and how it's going to be affecting uh, the cryptocurrency markets, Bitcoin, and what we're looking at for potentially the remainder of the year. Because the way that you were talking, that I understand things with you is we are now in a solar cycle, a solar phase. Correct. And when, when we're in solar phases, it the way that I'm understanding it is that eclipses, solar eclipses, total, annular, have more an effect during a solar cycle. And lunar in in the lunar text not lunar cycles but during a solar cycle when we have full moons and new moons they don't have as much of an effect correct then we have the inverse so when we're in a lunar cycle the new and full moons have more effect and the solar and the total and annular solar eclipses have less effect let me actually just share my screen this might be more helpful and then i could also clear a little bit of confusion about what you said so first things first a new moon or a full moon, it would be always those eclipse timeframes because you need to have a new moon or a full moon in order to have an eclipse. So for instance, when you would have this recent March 25th lunar eclipse, it was a full moon. And when you have your solar eclipses, it's because of a new moon, right? And there's a great website that you all can use. It's called calendar-12.com and it gives you moon phases. And I save the whole calendar for the year. And that way I could just look at whenever we have our new and full moons. Um, it gives you a little bit more data, like third and first quarter moons, which I also teach. But that calendar gets, what? Calendar slash twelve dot com. Okay. Uh, let me pull up my screen so I could show you guys a Appreciate little bit it. about what's going on in a very very basic chart. So do you um do you trade professionally? Are you a prop trader? You trade for a firm? Is that something you can 
going to or no? No, I've only traded personally. I've only okay. traded with okay. my own account. Um, to give you a little bit of uh, you know background on that, I was running an e-commerce business that was very, very successful leading into C19. I'll, I'll try yeah. to be coded with my words here. Oh, but, that's okay, fine. Man, you're good. Yeah, it was yeah. great. Fuck we're, we're, in the, fuck we're, fuck in the border, we're in the borderlands. Yeah. yeah, you can say it now. It's all over. So now you can say COVID, C19, V19, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, so I was um I was doing e-commerce pretty successfully. It gave okay. me it, it allowed my you know me to get some grasp of where the trends were, what was going on at the time, and I was also simultaneously studying the Federal Reserve and Fed policy and what they were planning on doing, um, you know, with the monetary supply, fiscal. Uh, anyway, so we all know the story behind what happened because we've already all lived through it, and right. I because I was doing drop shipping that was heavily reliant on China. Gotcha. Um, I lost the whole business. I actually had three simultaneous stores running and then they cracked down on advertising through Facebook ads so yeah. that all of our accounts were getting banned. And I was working with an agency and we were scaling and we were, it was great. I learned so much, but then I lost, ev I lost all of my cash flow in yeah. overnight. I had wow. the money, but I lost all my cash flow because all the ad accounts were disabled. And then at the same time, it was taking like a month and a half to ship products because of what they were doing with the, um, they were like sanitizing the docks and all sorts of crazy shit that made no mm. sense. But anyway, so I needed to make a move. And yeah. at the time I was like, okay, everything shut down. I'm like here, I can't leave this desk or this house. And all I did for like 15 to 16 hours every day was study the charts. I just learned TA and I taught myself it whilst actively um, trading with leverage. And I, I became very, very good at it very quick. And that's just kind of the person that I am. Whenever I get a hobby, I pour like all my heart and soul into it. And through that, I started to notice patterns where I was like, wait, all this shit that I know about astrology and numerology is coming through in these charts. And it all happened by mistake. So it was like, boom, boom, boom. A bunch of dominoes fell all at once. But yeah, I've only personally traded. Um, okay, so so your implementation or execution of your... So our, let me back up. How long have you been into the numerology, astrology stuff? I've been into numerology and astrology, particularly numerology, for maybe like, I want to say 10 years plus. Okay. Like definitely over a decade. But okay. I got into Gamatria quite recently, actually. I only got into it maybe a little bit before C19. And um, okay. it was it was because a close friend of mine shared with me a chant two channels at the same time uh, shared this guy Logan over at his name is decode your reality if you want to check out his YouTube channel and the other okay. one was Zach Hubbard from Gamatria effect news. I was sent both their work at the same exact time and um, that's why I utilize the Chaldean cipher when you guys check out my videos and that's also why I utilize the four base ciphers but now what I did out of the out of the gate was I did not use their strategies of decoding. I just found this decoding calculator, this Gamatria calculator from okay. watching these videos. And then I started doing it in my own system, which it's a little bit deep, uh, you know, it requires a lot more background. I'm not going to get into it too much here. But sure. what I realized was that everything is tied back to some sort of planet, like mythology, if you will. So before we had Jupiter, we had the mythology of Jupiter. And when you take the mythology of Jupiter or Zeus, you'll start to see that everything is just plagiarized off of a prior story. And yes. it keeps going back and back and back. And That's why I left Christianity. Sure, that could be a great reason to question <laughs> your faith. Yeah, once you start to realize that everything is just borrowing the deities yes. and repackaging them, I don't and I don't want to I, I you know I don't want to go down the rabbit hole on that side maybe we can that may be what our conversation will be about Jordan uh when we have our discussion but uh I definitely want to know like where is the source where is the original source of these stories because there there's a pattern now I'm not saying like you know Christianity Islam they're, they they all kind of have a running theme and I'm just wondering, like, where the hell does it all lead to? 
where's the source primary source for yeah well for that's these definitely stories, but that's, that's definitely a, another conversation for yeah. sure but yeah. anyways so so i found out about the uh, gamatria stuff very very recently but immediately okay. immediately the way that i got going with it was um utilizing mythology which to me was what mm. debunked all religion mythology is where it's at and mm. i'm not just talking about greek and uh, roman mythology i'm saying this stuff is it goes back to uh, Sum egypt, the sumerian egypt, absolutely yeah. egypt okay. and babylon and um for sure when you start looking into that stuff that's where the plagiarism really starts to kick off after that anyways yeah. um i noticed uh, yeah, that ostrahasis and your uh all these different um sumerian texts that were reach re retranslated in different languages and that kind of looks like our book of genesis and the correct. bible correct correct for sure for sure right okay so, that's interesting so you so that you, gives you've a little like since COVID, you've really like just from happenstance brought all of your all these things together to uh to a trading strategy that's pretty neat man yeah and he started a channel and he's got double the amount of he's got more subscribers than us combined hey <laughs> uh, well, as it should you know, be no i so think that out. i think that what's most important to realize is that we all have so much opportunity here to spread the truth about what's going on in these markets in our own way, yeah. like in our own way of interpreting it. Like, I think there's so much noise right now that if you're somebody who's real and you're honorable and you're spreading your truth in your way, like, yes, that's all that matters. So, so I think I, that a lot of the time we see these channels with 500,000, 600, a million, but like how many of those people who are following that work are there for the right for the right reason well and how many mm -hmm. of those are bought and paid for too sure that's yeah, another that too that's another theory i, I but, have another okay after you're done i have another question yeah um do you you could ask your question real quick and then i could break down this chart a little bit for you guys okay so sweet give your audience a step by step on how this goes so so this it kind of goes to uh pass the coffee's um comment here he's saying that apex predators use this method to crack and we're just cracking you're just basically basically cracking the code right so my question is, what happens when too many people or do you think enough people will ever start utilizing this and then that will become a watered down strategy? Like, how does that work? We know how markets work, right? You can't have too many people using it, then you, you can't extract the alpha from the markets anymore. So yeah. kind of talk to that. Well, I point. mean, there's a quote from JP Morgan and like whether it's legitimate or it's not, it's mm -hmm. It's like, it's pretty revealing and it's, it's an old quote, you know, uh, billionaires use astrology. That's it. Like yeah. millionaires don't. Yeah. 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 I heard, so, I saw that quote the other day. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, no, but I mean, I've heard so many misconceptions about that quote saying that it's not actually a correct quote, but it does seem like if you were like what you were saying with Coinbase, the listing of, of the coin coin stock. And then sure. you look even like me and you have talked before, like when because you're like one of these people who don't really pay a lot of attention to the news. So when I fill yeah. in some of the news things, it kind of it it puts a lot of more things in perspective. And I've noticed sure. that a lot of the Federal Reserve FOMC meetings are kind of timed astrologically as well. hundred percent. Mm. It's hundred percent. Everything in this world that they're doing at the banking system is timed according to astrology. Right. Because wow. they know. Well, I mean, real, real quick. Ask anyone who's a corrections officer, somebody who works in the ER, or anyone who's a police officer, a firefighter, and you're going to get a pattern of the most chaos going on a full, full moon. Moons. Yep. That's not my opinion. You know, I like to bring that up to new people to my work, though, to remind them, like, why do we have these dips around full moons? Now, remember, we just went through a lunar eclipse during a solar cycle. That's not to and you wouldn't want to anticipate huge huge devastating moves during those time frames but if we were in a lunar cycle which will start in march of 2025 then lunar eclipses are going to be much more noticeable but anyways i'll get to that when i review the chart the so point I have being is that you could ask people who are police officers and they know during a full moon hospitals goes, like you said yeah i mean i mean it's and we see it with animal behavior and with like how it interacts with water and tides and things like that as well yeah, I'll have to phone my billionaire friend and ask him about that numerology. You have to introduce me to your billionaire friend. Well, you, yeah. know, you know what I think the real translation was, though? It was that billionaires hire astrologers 
it's not that they are astrologers. I got you. It's they that use, they, they use the astrologers. Yeah. They use them. Like, do you, I don't think the Rothschilds are going out to Stonehenge on a full moon with their crippled old bodies, like trying to fucking do some ritual. Like, well, definitely not Jacob. <laughs> they're hiring people <laughs> to go do this for them. And the way witchcraft and magic works is the energy just gets sent to whatever direction it needs to go. Like 9-11 is a great example. Anyone mm. who, who breaks down the esoteric deeper meaning of 9-11, you have tower one, then you have the next tower, that's one, one. And then you had tower seven, that's one, one, seven. Well, September is not the ninth month in the system because septem in Latin means seven. The day that that happened on would be one, one, seven, written internationally. And then after Tower Seven magically collapsed, the next thing that happened was the Pentagon, which is the pentagram, which is the way they set up the floor beneath their magic ritual. It was a ritual. Yes, there's casualties. I was, I'm from New York. I was living in New York at the time. It's fucking disgusting what they did. But it is what it is. Like once you open up your eyes and you see it for what's going on, you now know, like, don't take it personally. It's just who's running the show. They're not basic people. They are wizards. They're witch they're doing witchcraft. So and we're a part of their we're a part of the uh the uh recipe, if you will. We're ingredients in the recipe. Man, it's so crazy you brought up 9-11. I was talking about 9-11 at dinner last night. Yesterday was my birthday, so I'm trying to explain to my family that I don't believe in karma. I think uh, it's an illusion that there's karma. I think it's all cause and effect, but I, I brought, we brought up 9-11. I'm like, is that karma or is that a cause and effect? Is that from us going, doing horrible things to horrible, to, to decent countries for so many years and they're just attacking us or what, what was it? But that's interesting that you brought up 9-11, man. Um, well, I yes. asked people when I first started my channel as an experiment, I asked everyone, what was your first red pill moment? And just comment below. And what happened was like 80 to 90% of the submissions were 9-11. I had, But I was hearing people that were 60, 70 years old that were saying 9-11. That wow. was the event that got them to wake up. So what I'm, what I'm revealing here is that 9-11 woke you up more like C-19 made you more conscious. I know you hate it. I know you think Fauci is a whatever and right. Gates is trying to, but it, it allowed you to mine more consciousness from the ether. It made you better. It made you a more honorable man. We need to wake up to sword. this shit. It was a double-edged I mean, sword. Yeah, it's done to see how you react or you respond, right? Like if the flood's yeah. coming, are you going to sit there and complain at the rain or are you going to start building a fucking boat? What are you going to do? Right, right, right. So you, Man, everything that happens is... that's out of your control, it's still an opportunity for you to do something about it, like for you to respond about it. Anyways, I know that this is a little bit deep and out of the context of charts, but sure. it's what I rather talk about because I think it's it's a little bit more. So do we do we live in a simulation then? Because all this shit sounds like simulation. Uh, like we're not in a base layer uh, reality. This is Real, I, I think I think Listen. reality is a simulation. It's 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 what's beyond the reality that's real. It's what what we think of as reality is the simulation. It's organic yes. simulation. That's what I'm saying. But like I don't think we're in base reality. Spiritual beings that that are infinite, infinite energy. That th this is we're just contained in this meat suit temporarily. You know, have you guys ever checked out that uh, that Black Mirror episode called USS Callister? No, was that was which one was that? It's the one where it's this dude who's like a CTO of a tech company, and he's the more nerdy one who's like programming and coding this game. And the game is called Eternity, I believe. And you know, in Black Mirror, they always put this like little button on their temples, and then their eyes roll in the back of their head, and then they go into some sort of like sim. Yeah. Well, he's a guy who's designing a sim game, and what happens is you you find out that there's players that are in this office of this tech company and he's uploaded their consciousness into a a, a sub game that only he has access to and that only he can work on the code of and it's private and he's able to get them into it through just uh getting some of their dna 
And then once he locks them in there, they have a carbon, like a double where their real body is like living in this false reality. Mm. And then their, their true consciousness that has awareness is locked in this game in his prison. And wow. I'm like, I had to check you, that one out. I don't you, think I've seen it. Definitely check it out. And then I just uh, checked out that at the same time I was, I was uh, checking out the movie get out. Um, I have to watch things in like, three or four day intervals because I'm so busy and I just don't have the time to watch this through. But like, it was really uh, interesting. I had like 30 minutes of this of get out to, to watch. And that's when it starts getting juicy, right? That movie. And then I, yeah. I, I, I it was like, oh shit, I remember this USS Callister uh, show. Bro, I think they're revealing to you what it is, like what we're going through. Mm. We, we are experiencing like a bad copy, but this is the copy that we live in where we get to have a central nervous system. So I'm a firm believer that like we are jacked into the sim simulation through the mm -hmm. central nervous system. And this is the opportunity to have feeling. This is mm -hmm. where we laugh, cry, have an orgasm, get beat up. This is where we get crucified. This is where we get worshiped, but in the body. So you have to feel all of this. But mm -hmm. if I took away your body right now and I just made you pure spirit and you were just floating out there timelessly, but you had memory of what it was like to be in a body, Mm -hmm. Don't you think you would want to go back in that body ASAP? Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah, you would. I because think so. you like feeling. You like right. pain. You actually love the tough lessons. You like getting knocked down and falling. You think you don't right now, but it's because you don't have the wit. Of course, we're speaking. Uh, I'm not talking about you directly, but it's that you don't really know what you desire until you've seen hell, until you've been through the trenches, until you've had something really, really, really traumatic happening. And then you've experienced what that taught you, which is to be grateful for this experience. It's like, this is actually a beautiful world. There's beautiful people here. I know if you focus all your attention onto the doom and gloom and what's going on in some particular geographic location, you can start to become the feeling state of what's going on there. Even though you're sitting in a comfy couch right now, talking to me on the fucking internet, right. you can literally astrally project out of your own feelings to just be caught up in everyone else's. And that's what the elite do to us. They're using us for our emotion. That's, they don't need to kill us. They just need us to give infinite prana. Negative. Well, not just prana, but negative prana, I believe. So do the elitists, are the elitists in control of the simulation? So are they, um, have they inserted themselves into the simulation? And they're coming from base reality, or how do how do you look at the elitists, or do they just yeah. crack the code and understand how to I how think to play the, the game? USS Callister episode is exactly how it's going. Okay. That main character, he jumps in and out of the sim. That's it. Like you can, okay. he, we can't though. Like we're mm -hmm. here, and uh, we have this thing called birth, and we have this thing called death. But like during that whole timeline. It feels very much to me. This is intuitive, by the way, because no one knows, just like nobody no one knows. knows if heaven is real or hell is real. Right, right, right. I think heaven and hell are just states of consciousness. But anyways. I do too. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to what we're experiencing here, it does very much feel to me like it's simulated, but it's not simulated as a prison planet. A lot of people want to go under that assumption that this is like a horrible imprisonment. I don't believe that. Okay. I think this is where we're here to learn the greatest lessons of all time. And the Matrix movie teaches you this too. Like when Neo gets jacked in to the simulation. So real there, quick, this uh, USS Callister from Black Mirror is season four, episode one for people that are curious. Yeah, check it okay. out. So, I'm gonna have to check it out. Yeah, the, the Matrix movie I think does a very good job at this too. Like the process of becoming enlightened to the fact that this whole thing called reality is not what we think it is. There's another yeah. movie that came out, I think, before The Matrix that I forgot the name of it. It's like something dark, a uh, dark something. But it's dark really, City? Yeah, yeah. That Dark City is dope. Check it's out Dark old, City. It's an older Check movie, that yes. That's older. It, I think it came out like one year technically it's before Val The Kilmer, Matrix. Or someone famous is in that. Can't uh, remember. I feel like they do these movies to um, – it, it's not like they I, – I, I hear people say they have to tell us. They have to tell us. I feel like it's more so – a whistleblower these are like whistleblows for me that or like dog like, whistles like to let people know it's like playing with your prey too you ever seen a cat just playing with a mouse that's dying 
No. And it just it will like take the mouse and like bat at it and use it. Oh as a yeah, <laughs> yeah. My cat it, used to do that. But, with it, little, but it's yeah. still alive. Yeah. So yeah. I kind of feel like that in a sense too. Yeah, like I think we just need to realize that whoever is the leadership of I call them the stewards of our realm. Some people call them elite. I call them apex predators sometimes. Like okay. whoever these elite are to you, just think of they think of us the way a lion thinks about a hyena. Like we're just where their food and that's all it's okay in the jungle they're not going to sit there and bitch and moan about that truth like We're the they peasants just, the ant people well organize organize your hyenas accordingly stop complaining <laughs> about the fact that the lion wants to eat you it's like mm. what are we going to do about complaint when we're in the jungle like this is kind of a jungle right like yes. you get to decide what you want to do about this i know some people think that like everything is predetermined and if that is the case then whatever but i once heard kanye west he said something about like changing the cards you were dealt and based on the stars and he said like basically like i don't care about the cards that i was dealt like i know what i need to do like because everyone doubts you in this matrix the whole simulation is almost set up to send agents your way you guys yeah. have all dealt with it where you have a great idea or you have a vision or you have something that intuitive that comes up and you're passionate about it and then somebody shows up to be like now nah, that's not a good idea go to college Go do this. Yeah, go yeah, do that. Yeah. But then right, you're like, right. you have to ask yourself, like, wait up, is this person here to support my expansion? Or are they here to make me be mediocre like they are? And then you notice when you start expanding in this realm, when you start becoming successful in whatever metrics you think success is, you start to see the hate seep in. And then again, yeah. you just deal with it in a new form. So it's just like the agents in the Matrix movie. It's no different. And if you so, notice the way that Neo's relationship was with the Oracle, the Oracle is like your higher self. She was always like, Neo, you know the fucking choice because you already made it. You know the answers. Like, who cares what I know is coming up? Like, you already feel what is coming up. You know what you have to do. And that's the first player character in the whole movie that really allows him to kind of feel into all of that. You know what I mean? Most yeah, of the man. time, most of the time, they're all just like worshiping Neo. Like he's the one, you know, he's the right. But but the, you get zero worship vibe from Oracle. She's almost right, like, right, right. She's almost like the higher self in this regard, like what mm. the uh, Egyptians would call like um, Ka, like this life force energy right. that just keeps you like moving. And not yeah. in doubt and not in fear. And I don't even think that the elite want us to feel fear. I know uh, Rice brought brought this up. It's not that I disagree. It's that I think they just want us to keep being confused and not have clarity. Because fear is a very important uh, technology. It, it motivates you. Fear is fucking motivating. I remember yeah. when I when I lost that business well, that I last had. Or, I started well, to get I, fearful. I, I, except to some... Start to some just, people, Jordan, you. yeah, can just shut yeah, because you, you can have fear. Uh, you you know you hear the fear, the flight or fight type thing. Some people sure. flight, some people run away, and they don't fight. So I don't know. It can be a double edge. I agree with Rice on that one. Absolutely, but it's all about how you transmute that energy. It's right, like saying right. water I agree. is. I it's agree. like saying water is good for you. It's like okay, but you could drink too much of it and drown yourself and die. Yep. Yeah. What Everything, type of water? Any, is it water that's that purified or is it water that has sediment in it? <laughs> is, is it water from Flint? Yeah, it's water. Round of applause. Is it water from Flint? You don't want Flint. that one. Shout yeah, out to so, Flint. So that's the point. It's like when we say something like fear is bad or fear is what the elite want us to have. It's like, uh, no. Yeah. It's like it's uh, everything has different a spectrum of color, a spectrum of frequency. Like love even has mm -hmm. that spectrum. You mm -hmm. notice that the person you love the most is the person that pisses you off the most. <laughs> yeah. It's the it's the person that frustrates you the most. So I think this like externalized worship culture is kind of really what mm -hmm. they want to maintenance. Mm -hmm. They want you to hate Andrew Tate and they want you to love Brad Pitt and they want you to hate Biden and then they want you to love Trump. It's that they want to keep you in duality consciousness. It's not even that they want you to only have the hate. It's they actually like when you worship something, and that's the f worship of false idols. You shouldn't wor worship shit besides yourself. I know that sounds crazy. Some people might think that's egoic, but like at the end of the day, agents are designed to come into your reality and make you question what what you value. Man, the chat is going crazy. Shout out to the chat room, guys. Make yeah, sure you go out. follow Waters Above right now. Okay, so hit that like button. Smack it. 
do all those things share this video he's dropping some jewels right now and we definitely want to get this word out i'm going to send you jordan an interview that um kanye just did maybe about three weeks ago with uh big boy big boy is a west coast uh dj legendary mm -hmm. dj been yeah, in, in the no space way. for a while i don't know if you saw that video that interview he did but uh you know i, I for for many years I, I i thought that kanye was and maybe he was going through like a psychosis or mental breakdown or whatever and but in, in this interview man he, he sounded a lot more coherent he sounded like he was actually getting away from some of the traditional things that he learned from a spiritual perspective mm -hmm. and it sounds like he's really starting to wake up man I, and yeah. i was like wow so i think you might enjoy that interview man yeah i've heard snippets dope. of it and um, okay okay the one yeah. the one snippet that i heard that i really resonated with was when he was talking about this one track that he made called back to me and how he played it for his daughter and it's, yes, a song, yes. it's a song that has like the stupidest lyrics of all time. But like, but what he said was so perfect. He said that he played it for his daughter and then he yep. asked her if she like, what did she think about her? If he should remove the part of the song. And then he was she talking about me. how like sometimes she, my mom speaks through her. And I was like, whoa, yep. you know, like yep. he, yep. he, he's, he's more of a, he's more of a father than I think a lot of people give him credit yep. for. And then a lot of people see the shit that he's up to, like all the antics. And then they immediately assume that that's like him being a bad role model. But you, you know, like, I think it's just a, an interesting take on the whole, the whole thing that we would have been unaware of. If we just listened to the song, we would have been, it's very cringy, you know, like it's very cringy part of the song. And it's like the best beat on the whole fucking album he made. Mm, like it's the okay. most lit song on the album. I didn't so, even hear it, but I was just like, it, man, he's he's starting to like kind of get away from the Jesus archetype. Yeah, thing well, as well. I'm like, why do people? Why do people use? What's the purpose of the technology of of Jesus? You know, I don't want to offend anyone. No, we're not. We're not trying to offend anyone. It's yeah. Hey, we're all at our we're Jesus, all at our own levels. And we'll grow, the technology hopefully. of Jesus is for you to avoid the fact that you are the Buddha. Mm. You are the Christ. You are the Son. It's to avoid that knowing. Well, in the in the Bible, even Jesus. Well, we have a church here, y'all. <laughs> I mean, we have a church been, here. Jesus is quoted as saying that that we will do greater things than He. That that we are that we are gods in and of ourselves. That we have the power within us that that the kingdom yeah. is within us literally, literally straight up in the bible yay yay are gods mm. lowercase yeah. g but yes yeah yeah i mean hey I, I, like gods? i said i'm not <laughs> saying that I, like i think that that many of the things that uh the jesus you know archetype uh talks about are great we can follow those um for sure so i'm not we're not shitting on uh any any anyone's religion no, or anything absolutely. like that at all so please don't take it that way guys we're no, just trying I mean, to open that third eye that, I, that you know i follow your career yeah right. you're yeah exactly exactly and so. and for me to be very transparent with people when i was I growing when i was growing up i asked my mom like why aren't we going to church why aren't we doing that stuff and she told me that she was an atheist she didn't make mm. me an atheist, but when she told me that, I said, why? And then she did not give me a good, she didn't give me a satisfactory response. You want to know something crazy? I think it's harder to be an atheist than it is to, to believe in something. But hey, that's, I don't know. Yeah, well, I, I mean, the way I reacted to her intuitively was like, I don't, that response doesn't sit well with me. Like, that's a right. shitty, that's a shitty reason. Yeah. So yeah. I didn't just full fledged go into some like, you know, oh, I hate God or I'm anti. No, none of that. Like for me, it's all about expansion of consciousness. That's right. I always tell people, take what resonates with you and leave the rest. And the Bible is full of some gems. Yes. There is wisdom in that, that 99.99% of the human species can't even comprehend. They're not wise enough to know. Right. It's like giving. So, so the thing is, is but just like don't stop there, guys. Is what what I say is just don't stop at the Bible. You don't stop at you don't stop at one book when you're in college or in high school, right? Explore all of it so you have a, a well-rounded view yeah. of reality or what we call reality. 
in my opinion. And learn how to actually learn how to actually read, like know the meanings behind words and not just the definitions. And that's why my new decoding mastermind course was created. I created it literally for the people that that want to, they want to know what the Bible actually is saying. Like it's pro religion in every single perspective, but it's about the religion of you reconnecting to the source back within yourself because all of those lit lines that are in the bible are always bringing back to you remember the bible was made by the mind of man you can study all of these holy texts and one of my favorite quotes of all time i forgot who said it super like like a lady that was like at least in her 70s she said when a baby's born and she was a christian by the way she was like mm-hmm. a bapt baptist like goes to <laughs> singing in church (laughs) yeah she she said this she said that when a baby's born it doesn't come out of its mother's womb with a book strapped to its ass Mm, yeah and i was like i started laughing it's very funny initially but the really the thing that we're going to here is it's an it's the thing that you start to include in your life to have a set of guidelines and and an awareness of how to navigate the simulation and I very much think it's a book that reveals we're in a simulation also. The same thing with mm-hmm. the Quran, the same thing with the Torah, the same thing with Kabbalah, anything of that nature. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I actually created that course for people to be able to know the meaning of these Bible verses, not just the definitions or not just the interpretation that was given to you by a pastor or somebody who's a theologian. Okay, so let's get back to the charts because, man, we can go down this path for hours. I got even more questions, but I don't I want to <laughs> keep it focused on what the title of the video is. All right. So people don't get pissed. Uh, so tell us about the chart that you had up and uh, and what, uh, you know, what you want to break down there for us. What's sure. coming up with Bitcoin? Of course. So here you're going to see in the red lines, this will be the start of solar cycles. And what that means is every two and a half years or so, we have years that start with solar eclipses. And then we have a sequence of four eclipses. And then the following year, we'll have the year starting with a lunar eclipse, which would be the start of a lunar cycle. And the basic is the basic definition of what's going on here is a solar cycle is our bull run and a lunar cycle is our bear market. So I'll zoom into this cycle right here. We have prior all time high from December 2017. One year later, all the cycle lows. Then we have this solar cycle right here on a solar eclipse in July. We rallied from the bottom into that first solar eclipse. And then we maintained uh, our trend throughout. I'm going to jump back to this, but let's just go to today's cycle. Okay. Imagine you have either all time high of the double top, whatever you want to, whatever you believe is the all time is the true high. And then you have this correction about one year later, and then you have your first solar eclipse there. And from the bottom to the first solar eclipse, you see bullish recovery, even a break mm-hmm. of structure. So we know that this is the start of a bull, of a bull run. Yes. So we'll go back to this cycle. So now. This was one, uh, I want to talk about this cycle in particular because it was a ridiculous cycle to navigate given we had this black swan event which created all the things that we've already lived through. So we don't need to talk about it, but it was a V-shaped recovery. And then we have the Bitcoin halving, which was situated around a solar eclipse. And then once we got to this um, moment where we passed through that solar eclipse, we went bullish into this next solar eclipse. I want to take it step by step with you because we see this trend of when we move from the third solar eclipse in the solar cycle to the fourth solar eclipse is when things start to get really, really bullish. So we have over here, we have the third solar eclipse to the fourth solar eclipse. We broke into price discovery. And then here we have from the third solar eclipse to the fourth solar eclipse. We were already hyper extended in this cycle, but you can see still went. Exactly. Still went up again. Yep. And there's also another thing that we have cycle to cycle, which is that after the fourth solar eclipse in our solar cycle, which is before moving into a lunar uh, cycle, we have an all time high. So you see this white line followed by shortly after an all time high. Then you have this cycle, white line, shortly after all time high. Then you have in this cycle, white line, shortly after all time high. Now, our fourth solar eclipse isn't until October. So this is why I said very early on in this to be very transparent. I did nice. not think that Bitcoin was going to be able to get all the way up to 70 so fast because yep. we usually see cycles are getting a little bit more uh, reduction in ROI. So diminishing returns, diminishing 
gains, right? That's an assumption we all have. Yeah. That's that's why we did what we did last cycle. We didn't do Law nearly as numbers. Yeah. Sure. As market cap increases, something becomes more commercial. The you know all of those things add up to less ROI. So, believe it so, or not. so jo Jordan, I have a quick question. So the fourth cycle, the white lines that we're seeing, and we we're getting a rally each time. Is there actual number like a count on that? Is it down to the precise count? after the white line do we have like uh seven weeks or ten weeks or it, it, does it do does it work that way as well do you get what i'm saying yeah like after so, that white line do we see it, it only takes 10 weeks or whatever x amount of weeks to get to all-time high great question is it so it it depends on it depends on many many factors but the one thing that i've noticed is it's typically before we move into a lunar cycle and i wish I don't have the chart anymore because I made it like a PDF file and it showed you okay. the start of all the lunar cycles. That would probably be helpful. Um, okay. But anyways, the point here is that there is not some specific science until after the solar eclipse when okay. we will top out. But it's just that we have. Gotcha. We've never topped out before the fourth solar eclipse. Gotcha. We've always extended past it. So I'm just telling everyone this because a lot of people um, have their own opinions. They think like Bitcoin is going to continue on its bull run maybe for the next couple months and then it's over when fed policy changes or people think fed's going to pivot in q4 or maybe q1 of 2025 so just to lay all of that confusion kind of to rest it's just mm -hmm. that we have our true cycle all-time high after this fourth solar eclipse which gives me optimism that it's likely we top out into the end of 2024 or early 2025 yep um, yeah, that's where that where is that with me I was going to ask Not you, where does that white line with uh, the fourth solar cycle put us in time frame based off what you have there? So if I was to take the last two, which I think are a little bit better than the first cycle, because the first cycle was way too much speculation and pretty much the only way to get Bitcoin back then was doing some weird shit on like the black market. <laughs> there was really no exchanges that took fiat easily. There was a lot of loopholes you had to go through. But by this oh, yeah, cycle, I was, that was back there. <laughs> yeah, that's back when you had those drip sites where you can go get Satoshis and launch sure. ads and stuff and go to CVS. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so over here we have about 100 days, so let's just call it a little bit over three months. And then okay. over here from this fourth solar eclipse to where we topped out is also around three months to 100 okay. days. So if okay. I just took about if I took about 90 days to um, 100 days, that puts you into the couple the first couple weeks of January. Now, let's one see. other thing to mention that I think will be helpful for all of your viewers is that we see Bitcoin top out all time highs on new moons. So what we've seen every single gotcha. time, I could zoom in. Um, I don't know if it'll load but you see these blue dots these blue dots are new moons these white dots are full moons so when i zoom out over here you can see that our all-time high was right into that new moon the prior um cycle high was literally on the new moon and then the 2017 december all-time high was on the new moon of december it's every time so the point that i'm making is that you would want to look for the december 2024 new moon january 2025 new moon but i do remember that we have we have a uh double new moon in december <laughs> so a you know how like moon. yeah you know how like we call them blue moons when we have two full moons in a month well yeah. in in no in december 1st and december 30th of this year we have new moons two in a fucking month i haven't gotten around to like a deep dive of what that what that means um, but that's that's important. That has mm. to be important. What is the date of that fourth solar eclipse? And is that it's October second of, of this year? Yes. Let me and write that what's, down. What's is really that a, powerful? Um, annular. Is that another annular one like we had back in October? Yes, exactly. Okay. It's it's like the one that we had back in um, mid October, correct? Okay. Yeah. So it's not a total, well, I mean, it's like you're splitting hairs here, but effectively, um, yeah, just a, another solar eclipse in the year. And what's really important about that solar eclipse is that it's Rosh Hashanah. It's the Hebrew New Year. And we okay. have a war right now between Israel and whomever. Yeah. 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 There's, uh, it's a lot going on. <laughs> yeah. yeah whoever. Just what Israel versus. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's very itself. much turning into that. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's very much turning into that environment where I've been telling people, I'm like, you got to keep in mind the war narrative at this time. There's like three simultaneous narratives that are going to impact how these markets move over the next, you know, 12 months from today, literally right. till March of 2025. But yeah. um, yeah, I think I answered a lot of this yes. stuff in regards yeah. to, but let's talk about this really quickly, the where we're at now. Um, thing. I think by now a lot of people are starting to deny the importance of a Bitcoin having. I don't know what your audience is like or where you guys stand with this, but since Bitcoin broke these all-time highs uh, effectively ahead of schedule, um, it's making a lot of people go, well, the having doesn't matter anymore. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Again, I don't know where your, your audience is like on no, this. No, I mean, I think well, supply, I'll tell you, supply, yeah. so just simple supply, just just the, the way that the, the dynamic works with the fact that the supply is diminishing and these institutions are buying up for the spot ETF. It puts that supply crunch and it really shows you what like how important the supply is. So I don't think yeah. that it's taking effect with the mainstream because we were talking about this briefly yesterday on Bloodstream. Mm -hmm. I think that this is something that they're trying to keep quiet. But mm -hmm. then once it once it it's past the point of being quiet, because right now you can still get Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. But there's going to be a point where it's going to start being more and more difficult to get your Bitcoin, which is going to be people aren't really even going to want to be selling their Bitcoin at that point. What was it? Uh, what was the video or that one article that we were talking about? Was it like global liquidity? Yeah, so there's going to be a liquidity shock with with Bitcoin in October of this year is what they're saying, hmm. which lines up very closely to what you're what you're talking. It's just crazy, bro. So uh, yeah, they're they're saying that by September October ish area of 2024 20, this year we will have a, a supply side shock with Bitcoin. Um, I personally think that this having means even more and has more of an impact on Bitcoin than ever more, because more so. Yes, because Be we because, didn't because because the supply is being sucked up and these by the ETF guys. Right. Yeah, exactly. And then if exactly. we think about how many millionaires there are in the world and like just one uh all the millionaires owning one Bitcoin, like there's not enough. So once the money starts realizing that the supply is diminishing. It, that's when I think that we're going to see like this craziness in price. And that puts us, like you said, the October 2nd with this fourth solar eclipse yeah. where we are within the cycle. And I think that the, a lot of the stuff from the having will catch up. And then from this point forward, havings will be the most important narrative aside from development on Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Because it's just going to keep dim diminishing the supply. Because we're going, we're going from six point two five to three point one two five, and then we're going to, in four more years, one and some change. So, mm -hmm. so what do you think? Waters above. What do I think about what exactly? The having. The, the yeah. Well, so the having's time, the timing of it, the fact the that it was it. it was going to be in, it is going to be in late April, third mm -hmm. week of April. That actually aligns with the time that we typically see um, corrections in the stock market. And maybe I could get to that in a little bit if we have some more time. I could show you the cyclical nature of this particular Chinese year that we're in, utilizing Chinese astro uh, astrology. And mm -hmm. we're in the year of the dragon. And I've taken time to go through every year of the dragon going back to the Great Depression. So that shows a clear... Um, indication that april into may sometimes early june are the noticeable pullbacks that tend to rally uh beyond that like we we bounce july august are pretty good and we could be on new all-time highs by september but because i saw that data with um the way that bitcoin behaves on the 12-year cycle chinese astrology with the year of the dragon and a correction into late april um, and the fact that the having is in late April, the having is also around a full moon, which is typically a time frame that we get corrections. Um, all of that adds up to like, we should, we should range for a little bit of time. Like we should be pretty sideways. And then that also, that data is also shared. If you look at presidential election years in the traditional markets, almost every presidential election year, there's a correction in May. Uh, and then a little bit of sideways in June and then recovery pretty bullish in July and August. Um, so whether you want to look at this from the perspective of something more esoteric, like the year of the dragon, or you want to look at it from something more just basic data that's everywhere. Um, 
with the presidential election years. The two things that are very odd, though, is that everyone is giving all their energy to the Fed, what the Fed does simultaneously with what BlackRock or these ETFs are doing or what these institutions are doing with the Bitcoin ETF. So those two things are playing so heavy and it's making me think, are they like doing this to distract us before a a bigger perhaps correction, like some sort of washout event? Because mm -hmm. I don't, it doesn't really make any sense to me to have this sort of cyclical data. And then at the same time, we see the speculation as purely off of two metrics. That's what the Fed does. That's why after mm -hmm. that recent FOMC meeting, everyone started just going all in. And then we saw what just happened with BlackRock, uh, with BlackRock, with these ETFs. And we could see the data with the inflows post uh, ETF approval. We went straight from like 50 ish to 70 pretty quickly i mean if that's all we're gonna do is keep riding the wave of those two simultaneous narratives then i think we need to be very cautious in this environment because okay. if the fed pivot if the fed decides to do something that's opposite of what's been keeping this all so bullish or if there was something to happen with blackrock or something to happen with these institutions then where's the positive conversation around crypto anymore like I just don't see. Um, no, so, I'm, I'm a so huge. There's, yeah, yeah, I'm a huge well, I mean, believer there's, there's, in TradFi. Not you know, if TradFi rolls over, right? If we if Wall Street equities roll over, man, it's it's done data for, in my opinion, for for Bitcoin. It's a it's no, a I highly mean, risky asset. This is slightly off topic, but what are all of these billionaires who are CEOs of companies uh, doing? Oh, they're selling on there, selling their yeah, stocks. What are they yeah, doing yeah, yeah. with that? Yeah, they're they selling. Just, they're cashing putting, out, and then they're also the getting sidelines? fucking bunkers in the middle of goddamn nowhere. So is it all just cashing bunkers. out and getting bunkers, or I mean, is there no speculation that these guys are hedging with Bitcoin in any capacity? Hey, I well, said when Rick Ross too, built the to... when, when Rick Ross built the bunker, it was time for us to go. <laughs> That was your cue. When a rapper builds a bunker, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to go. Yeah. Especially a rapper that's like an ex-corrections officer. Yeah, but that guy, <laughs> yeah. That, guy was a, that guy was a punk, man. He was being threatened by gangs and had, like, literally I had know. I'm just yeah. saying, bro. The actual like, what does he really know? Being it's a his, funny his joke, bodyguards. though. No, I mean, you guys got to give Rick Rick some credit. He's probably a handler of a lot of these people that you think are free and have their own, mm. you know, mm. like I'm, I'm not trying to create another side conspiracy, but like I think he's the daddy to a lot of people that are well known. Is he, he, is he Diddy's daddy? No, did, no, did, no. Diddler, Diddler's is his daddy. You're on the yeah. floss. <laughs> Yeah. I know that's getting crazy off topic. Now, look, yeah, I, know. I, know, <laughs> what, what, I know people want to know this, Jordan. Like, we have this, we have this next total solar oh eclipse coming God. up on April eighth, and when yeah. we had this last um, annular solar eclipse in mm -hmm. October, yeah, we it, it was just pretty much off to the races. Correct. Yeah, uh, is this going to be another a, another start to another horse race? Are we going off? Like, off, is it? Are we just going to go straight to the moon at this point? Yeah. Okay. So let's analyze a couple things, guys. I'm going to go through every cycle with you, and I want you to focus specifically on the green where it says third solar eclipse. All right. Okay. Pay attention. Okay. Then we have the cycle, the first real Bitcoin cycle. We rallied literally days before the third solar eclipse, and then we had a big correction, immediate and 80% correction. I know it's hard to see, but that was how much Bitcoin corrected after it topped out in April of 2013. By the way, we're moving into that same time frame. By the way, this market in April of 2013, the day we topped out was almost identical to what our upcoming solar eclipse is. I'm not trying to say that we're just going to go parabolic until, you know, this particular date, but that is a data point to keep in mind that'll just give you more context than what we're about to get into. But super bullish into this third solar eclipse and then we stalled out. Now we have this follow, this cycle from 2013 through recovery and then ending in 2017. Remember, you want to pay attention to this green line where it says third solar eclipse. Now you can see that Bitcoin was playing around the prior cycle highs. It was testing those highs. And we had a lot of chop until we got to late April and then we broke out. But you see the behavior around this particular solar eclipse. We're very bullish into it. And I'm going to check back in with this with you guys in a minute because mm -hmm. I think this is almost what we're doing today. Like it's a one-to-one -one replica. So let's go wow. to this cycle. We have the third solar eclipse. Again, 
chop sideways and then moving into the fourth solar eclipse, we were we were really bullish. But I know we had this black swan event, but imagine we didn't have it. You, we would have absolutely that's, that's been March, on our that's March of twenty what twenty twenty exactly. Okay, okay. We had our third solar eclipse following in the summertime in June, like right around the solstice. We were, if you were just to delete whatever we did over here and look at the rally we had into the solar eclipse, it was the same from mm. March 16th to the day of the eclipse. Crazy bullish. The only thing that, you know, we could talk about is the clear washout. But with a V-shaped recovery, it didn't give people much time or the stomach to want to go all in, right? Most people were freaking the fuck out over here. Like they weren't getting bullish. Everyone thought the world was over. Right. But if you just delete these three red weekly candles and you look at what Bitcoin did into the third solar eclipse, it was very bullish, all things considered. So there's a relationship with the third solar eclipse where we're bullish into it and then a little choppy and sideways. And then there's also another thing going on where we have the um, retesting of all time highs. And if I was to zoom out and show you what we're doing today, this is our third solar eclipse over here. We are retesting all time highs. And then if I zoom into the 2017 cycle, we were doing the same thing around the same time frame. We were playing around with prior all time highs, broke slightly above it. I think we got 7% above. Let me show you real quick. It was about 6 to 7%. And then we dropped. Okay. Now, if I go to today, we're going to see we got to March broke above all time highs. And from 69 K we went up around six to 7% above almost 7%. And then we dropped. Mm -hmm. Now the difference is if we, uh, but you know, you guys are doing this live. So this is all happening as we, as we speak. I mean, the thing that would invalidate this is if Bitcoin was to just rally up um, and have no deeper correction or no sideways. So I wouldn't call what we just did sideways i mean it's very very bullish all of the corrections that we've had have been bought up almost instantaneously yeah. we have nothing but sideways it's just been parabolic since the last solar eclipse and here we are on the next solar eclipse so what mm. i think what i think isn't as important of course is what bitcoin will do but my feeling is that there needs to be a little bit of chop like a little bit of sideways and around well, let me let me we push tend back to let me push back on you on that one because waters above we haven't had 7600 bitcoins being purchased every day either for so sure. is it is it this time being different enough is that is that one thing that one variable enough for us to say this time is different yeah you know you know what i wonder is if we're mm -hmm. if they're doing this in a way to trap a lot of people into buying a top and then we have okay. maybe like this 2013 washout over here where imagine I'm just speaking hypothetically. Imagine we sure. film today, tomorrow, Bitcoin has a glory candle to 80K. And then in two weeks, which is right around through our next solar eclipse, Bitcoin goes straight to 100K. I want everyone mm -hmm. to close their eyes and just imagine Bitcoin goes straight to 100, maybe 125,000. I can believe it. Well, I don't think that's just going to keep going and going and going and going. There's right. always pullbacks along the way. And the more we hyperextend without any market structure, I mean, it's just what markets do. Yeah. So there needs to be profit taking or in this case, outflows along the way. Um, I just I, I think right now we're too narrative heavy. It's just okay. those two. It's the two columns of narratives. It's like what I said before. It's what the Fed's doing and what BlackRock or what these uh, institutions are doing regarding the CTF. If that's all we're going to keep going on, then like this is going to be one of the most boring and frustrating bull runs, I think, for 99 percent of the people that get involved because they're going to wait and wait and wait until Bitcoin's 100K. And they're probably not going to position themselves. that's where the pullback is going to be, in my opinion. That, that that's could very well be it. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah, a you know, psychological whole number. I started there realizing that Main Street versus Wall Street. Main Street is the liquidity. So I can't feel sorry for those people because if we want to be able to take profits and be able to exit out, it's unfortunately those individuals that give us the opportunity to do sure. so. Sure. Yeah, I'm not saying to feel any emotion about this. I'm just letting people know that if we get 100K Bitcoin now, like in the month of April, well, yeah i mean get ready for get ready for something pretty devastating and then i want to remind people that we have 
just had a couple big events happen on the world stage. Like you guys check in on Donut Factory's work. I know he popped in a little bit ago. Um, I sent out a decode almost immediately after what happened in Baltimore occurred because I have family that drives over that bridge all the time. And like the way that those two back to back events happened with the Francis Scott Key Bridge in, in Baltimore, as well as a couple weeks before, or like a week before we had that event in Russia, which was the moment after China and Russia decided to not play the game in Israel. Like, it's a little weird. And I want people to be aware of the geopolitical um, conversation here. So if, if there is going to be some like a parabolic advance for the crypto market or the overall markets that extends through April with no noticeable pullbacks, and they're going to keep riding on this narrative, then I would not be shook if there was a war related event and then we start to see what happened in 1940. Anyone right? Or let me pull up the chart. I could show you guys what the hell I'm talking about. So it's not just like okay. me uh, rattling off numbers. I'm going to go to the S&P 500. We're going to go back to 1940 and the significant of that particular year because it was the same Chinese uh, year, the year of the dragon. It was also the same eclipses happening throughout the whole year. We had the same solar and lunar eclipse dates. And another thing is the Hebrew calendar matched. That's very, very rare where the Hebrew calendar matches the Gregorian calendar that most of us use. Yeah. So, so I'm not just pulling this shit out of, yeah, I'm not just pulling this out of thin air. You could take everything I just said and you could go look for yourself. Look at the solar and lunar eclipses in 1940. Look at the Chinese year that we were in in 1940. Look mm. at all of, all of this. And you're going to see, you could pull up the Hebrew calendar. You'll find that April 9th, April 9th of, 1940 was the first like real big move pushing forward this world war ii narrative to be caught up uh around the world where everyone was starting to get a little worried and that was right after the eclipse that happened so we have a solar eclipse coming up on april 8th april 9th everything matches to that year as it does this so year and look at this drop right here may wow. 10th may 10th the national socialists called the nazis invaded a lot of countries all at once simultaneously we had a huge market drop it corrected into the time frame that i've been talking about a lot on, on the work on my channel and then we did bounce but it was just the start of a downtrend yeah. and one thing to also mention about the year of the snake is that if anyone goes back and looks when the united states joins in on any of these conflicts it's always during the year of the snake. I should probably make a video dedicated to this soon, but World War yeah, I, no, that's World War II, Vietnam, which is crazy because Vietnam was going on for a while before America got involved. They got involved in the year of the snake. And then obviously what just happened in 2001. With yeah, it was Jim, Morris, Jim Morrison's dad apparently was like involved with that um, whatever incident that got the United States involved in um, in Vietnam. So, I'm sure. Something I wanted to ask you because this kind of relates back, and I was very, very curious about what you meant by this tweet on March nineteenth. Uh, so this is like nine days ago, something like that. Um, yeah, you post it March nineteenth, and you put some numerology, which mm -hmm. adds up to twenty one. April 9th, numerology adds up to twenty one. These two dates are twenty one days apart. What does this mean? Yes. Yeah, so this number three, this is the Trinity number. And those three weeks are very much going to be heavy volatility and events. And if we look at from March 19th through April 9th, I could almost guarantee we're going to see a lot, a lot of events. So when did this thing happen in Russia? I think we just hit like a little like the year mark recently, didn't we? No, no, no. I meant like this uh, recent uh, shooting. Oh, the, the mass terrorist shooting. attack. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not sure what day it was. Yeah, it'd be sure. interesting. The I one haven't at been... the concert or something. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, the point here is that when you see these dates that are matching up and the sequence of time and based off this April 9th date that I was just talking about moments ago, which is mm -hmm. borrowing from a decode that had much more detail than this, it was revealing the day of April 9th specifically and why you need to pay attention to that date. And by the way, any truth or channel out there you probably see them talking about this upcoming solar eclipse and the preparation that's being done by the National Guard and military and hospitals and everything is preparing for this upcoming solar eclipse. 
there's so much coverage on it, even from channels that are like Christian channels that talk about biblical prophecy and things that are going on there. You could look at the U.S. debt clock and what they showed um, a couple days ago. The U.S. debt clock showed you the uh, solar eclipse that's happening on April 8th, the Great American Eclipse. Why are they showing all this symbolism? Why are they bothering? Well, it's happening for a reason. I don't think it's going to be there anymore. Because no, I'm just they, curious they what it is. Yeah. Well, now now so, it's just taking you here to uh, their Twitter account. But yeah. Yeah. It, it's been having some very interesting things on on their uh, on their site. Yeah. So, anyways, getting back to the the power of the two date numerologies, I just thought it was it was pretty fascinating when you took from that particular day of the nineteenth, sharing the date numerology to this next day that also has the twenty one, which would be the ninth, and then seeing the sequence of time in between it being synced as three weeks to the twenty one to twenty one, and that twenty one equaling three, the 333, three, three, which is the ascended master number. 33 is the number of transmutation. It's like the 33 degrees is when the ice cube becomes water again. This is the unfrozen pineal gland. This is a number associated with the Christ or the enlightened one. This 33 wow. degrees, the 33. I know. And, that's, and there's so many people like, especially people that are Christian that are paying attention to this particular eclipse based off of like what took place in 2017 with that eclipse and these signs in the, in heaven and space that go back to revelation and then like during this solar eclipse we're supposed to be the this devil's comet this double-tailed horn comet is supposed yeah. to be visible um we have the april 20th date right now tentatively for the having and then towards the end of april we have this double brood of cicadas these locusts uh, that are coming out together the first time in like 221 years the last time these two yeah. broods came out was under thomas jefferson and if you take all these things in combination yeah. i can see why people and then what you said it's like it almost sounds like you're talking about the return of jesus over here hey, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> hey. Well, have you guys heard of this red heifer? Uh, yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. So they're yeah, because apparently three or four of them now. are legal legal to uh, actually be sacrificed, and they may be sacrificed this weekend. Well, you wait, know, wait, like, wait. What were you guys talking about? I'm not familiar. The yeah, biblical so this, Hebrew the prophecy sacrifice dates are wild. Like when I heard okay. the sacrifice predict, because nobody knows when it's going to happen. And by the way, whatever they share on the news, that's horseshit. It's never, bro. These are fucking. These are like high level Luciferian rabbis. I know they're acting like they're all like holy. Oh, Rabbi Shmuley, that that idiot. This is like black magic at its finest, and they they don't even they don't understand how to. These read are the like Bible your, or these the are like Torah your, your Zionists, I believe. Yes, yeah, is exactly what it is. It's Zionism. is it the is it the one that uh, can't one of the the, the uh, rabbis that Candace Owens is beefing with. <laughs> Shmuley. Yeah, He's so this horrible, bro. This is a, this is a very important ritual that they're doing because okay. they've been preparing for it for a long, long time now. Like it's the same sort of actually I heard that four of these cows were shipped. They were shipped over from 2022. And yeah, what's it, interesting about that 2022 time frame was that was America's Pluto's return, allegedly. I know a lot of I was Depending just mentioning if it last night because when I just said this about this, these two broods of locusts, it, it related me back to the Pluto's return, which was back right. during the revolutionary time period, which, and there's all this talk of civil war. And it's like, if you look at things from the- Yeah, there's a movie coming out, I think on I, April, uh, what is it? April 20th? It's called yeah. Civil War. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. why are they making a Hollywood movie called Well, it's just civil like, war. it's just like that Obama produced thing on Netflix. Um, what, leave the, leave yeah, the world leave behind, the world whatever behind. it's called. Obama. Exactly. So uh, oh, it, it's, yeah. it's, it's really interesting. Um, I know we kind of got off track with that, but yeah. It's, so, it's so just so getting much, back to so this, much. I want people, I want people to study the environment geopolitically. Also the fight, what was going on in finance, what was going on in the stock market, like oh, in 1939 oh. and 1940. And if you pay attention to that one big event that happened on May 10th, right after that solar eclipse, it was about less than a month effectively which marked the top, by the way, you see that peak that I have that is peaked at the solar eclipse. And then we had a fake out and then a little sideways. And then we fell off a cliff due to that invasion. Um, that right there would not shock me 
if we had some shit like that go down. But the question is, if Bitcoin wants to go crazy bullish right now and hyper extend into a hundred thousand dollars, then if we had a deeper correction in the stock market, when Bitcoin returns back down, it might only go to 60K. So it's in the same trading range we've been trading in for the past couple of weeks anyways. You know, right, so right, Bitcoin right, is right. bullish as fuck right now. The crypto market is very, very obviously getting ready to go bananas. And I still think that even with big events that happen on the world stage, we will maintenance a bull run throughout the rest of 2024. Um, I don't think they're ready to crash the markets just yet in this type of, you know, sort of. Um, no, election. they're not going to crash the markets until election until, year. Until, yeah, until Trump gets year. in, then, then they'll rug pull. They'll do the sure. presidential rug pull. And that's why I'm showing you this exact style of correction, because look, it was only two months. We were chopping sideways after we had this correction and then we bounced very bullish out of it all the way up until Q4. So I could see this happening. This could happen in the stock market, this style of um, move, even if there was a huge event. I'm not saying there will be, but I do have my feelers out for April 15th. That's a date that I've been talking with Rice about for like a year now, maybe. Yeah. I've gone out of my way to really try to spread the awareness on the April Well, you said something date. about April 15th that follow, uh, what, a, a Sunday or something? There was something very specific about these April 15ths. Yeah, exactly. So what happens on and April 15th? And it's also 15th? tax day. Yeah, well, in the United States, yeah. yeah. Ta tax day? What, what, you, yeah, well, yeah. You, you interviewed the IRS guy and, and told me. I didn't never say I participated. Ne ne never, mind, never mind. Never mind. I'm just. I'm not going to say anything on on record with that. Continue yeah. above waters or waters above. My man broke out a cigar. <laughs> oh, he's a he's a connoisseur. Oh, I'm a connoisseur. Look, I got my I've got my humidor traveling one right here with me, man. Oh, we're, we're, we're locked and I've loaded. Never, I've never smoked a cigar. What's it about? We'll have to. Uh, we're, we'll, we'll talk offline. I'm going to come visit you because I need to give you a, a, a sacrifice, uh, Rabbi, above waters, waters above. <laughs> Investing the federal. There you go. Investigating that's, the federal. That's the way. book. That's the book. Yeah, Joseph man. R. Bannister, the former did you IRS. Jordan, did you see that interview? No, I haven't. Can oh. you send it to me, though? Yeah, I'll send yes. you a link to it, man. But he's a former, former special agent, gun-carrying IRS agent who, uh, who quit the IRS because he found that the federal income tax is completely unconstitutional and illegal. And he couldn't, um, yeah. he couldn't continue in the job with, with swearing an oath to the constitution. Yeah. See, you know what that is? Like people talk so much shit about these individuals who are caught up in these things and it's because they have no awareness. And then right. the concept of selling your soul is when you find out that you're part of some nonsense and then you and keep you going it. just for right, money. Right, so that's right, a real man. Right. Like when you realize yes. that you're doing something dishonorable and then you pivot, that's fucking mm -hmm. beautiful. Like we it should, is. It is. we should be to opening up our ears to the wisdom that those people have to say. It's very commendable. Oh, yeah, like because this happened so much during C-19 with these forced Vs that a lot of people were having to take because of jobs or whatever. But anyway, we'll get back to the chart. I know we can talk about the shift forever, but um, no, I appreciate hey, Thank you for giving us extra time, Jordan. I appreciate yeah, it. we appreciate this, man. This is awesome. Absolutely yeah, of course. awesome. You you asked me a question. I think it was about April 14th, 15th, right? Like where I well, got yeah, that pattern from. Yeah, because there was something of it was it's not every April 15th because it wasn't yeah. last April 15th. Exactly. What was it? What what was the specific thing about? Yeah. That make, so just separate? to let your let your audience know if they're completely unaware of this or if they have a couple of ideas of where this date has taken place in the past. April 15th is a ritual date. It's happened in so many, so many different areas as well, like not just to one particular sector or one particular type of political leader or one it's all over the place it's pretty much whatever the flavor of the year is it's the thing that it attacks okay so keep what i just said in mind what's the flavor of this year it's blackouts and war everyone and their mother is talking about blackouts and potential cyber, cyber attacks, attacks and, yeah right so you you know the flavor of the month all right the flavor of the year well, is it's, cyber it's, attacks it's and the world behind in civil war those two those two flicks will basically sum it up sure and they and they include both of the same things anyways right like leave the war behind what led to the civil war was the blackout so the point that i'm making here is now you get the idea of what it's likely to be if there is an event on that particular day all right april 15th was the day that the titanic sank and you all probably know, some of you that are into finance, that one year after was the launch of the Federal Reserve System. 
And the people who were ritualized on the Titanic were people that opposed the Federal Reserve System. But the day of that sinking started on the 14th of April into the 15th was the official day. Now, it was also the day that Lincoln was assassinated. Please keep this in mind, because if Biden goes down on the 15th, that should not be shocking to you guys, because everyone is expecting that anyways, just because of his health. But how right. crazy would it be if it was something involving the president in this it particular be, environment? It would, be, it would be beyond crazy. I'm that done. Could, that and, could then be. I, and then I will and then I will officially call you a witch. Hey, <laughs> I'm joining the, the church of uh, waters above. If that shit happens, bro. <laughs> Well, water yeah. above it's a biblical term. It's the firmament, the the waters above you know, us. Also, like I want people to know, like I'm not I'm not really trying to be right about any of this. Like I don't predict anything. I'm not playing the game of of right and wrong. Like I'm just I find these things and I want to spread the awareness. And what matters most to me is art and philosophy. I'm not right. here to be the guy who's right. I don't. It doesn't serve me. Like Rice knows that I'm just trying to have these conversations because in a world where everyone's avoiding these conversations, I think I'm this sure is the most wisdom, stimulating thing we could all do. Yeah, you, absolutely. Wolf pack. you got absolutely. your family. I mean, you're, you're looking out for people. Well, that's, that's past. what I want. And that's why I'm deciding to, you know, continue these collaborations because you've always allowed me to speak my truth without any censoring. And I do get a lot of people that reach out to me that have hundred, 150, 250,000 subscribers, and they want me to speak a certain way. And I tell them, yeah, to go fuck them man. like, I have no desire. Like, I'm never going to be a part of something where I'm not allowed to be me and I'm not allowed to right. spread my truth. Well, so I but, love you, Jordan. Yeah, yeah thanks, man. I love man. you. I love you, too, man. Appreciate I appreciate it. you guys. So about this April 15th day, I just gave you two big gems. And now we also had recent things that have happened on April 15th, one of which was the Notre Dame fire. The other one was the Boston Marathon bombing. And then during C-19 in 2020, it was the day with the most C-19 cases. Wow. So the pattern that I found, what I find to be most interesting is the two events that I just uh, talked about with the, the fire of Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, France, and then the one with the Boston Marathon bombing because we have the upcoming Summer Olympics happening in Paris. And if you look at the logo of the Paris Summer Olympics, it is literally a flame. It's because Macron is it's a flamer. <laughs> <laughs> Macron, Macron, Macron. Sorry. So I think that's kind of predictive programming in a way. Like I wow. think that's really, really revealing. And the other thing about this um paris summer olympics as well the fact that it's happening in the summertime where a lot of people are expecting there to be something to happen on the world stage because i think a lot of people assume that's when they like to hit people hardest when they're all on vacation when there's there's time off they're not expecting it they're kicking back and relaxing like i don't right. necessarily agree with that but a lot of the time when i share my truth you know people come back at me and say well you know they like to do things in the summer because of that reason I just revealed. So I think that when you have an Olympics in a big metropolitan city like Paris, you can expect travel and getting around and all that shit logistics to be already quite aggravating. And, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to see you're going to see some trouble with that. And the city of Paris has already been I mean, France is so volatile. They're they're having these riots like yeah, every I mean, month like, every you week you saw people dining while there was like fires behind them and exactly stuff. <laughs> exactly so if you're gonna have this bread and circus come to this city at this time and then you have that particular symbolism i think it's very revealing so anyways the the bombing and the fires and then we had this bombing that just happened in russia there's gonna be the also the bombing that happened in israel that started the war don't be surprised if the event that happens on April 15th would be a bombing and of like a power station, like some sort of power grid um, attack, and they would blame it on a bombing. I think yeah. that that's likely to be the thing. There's obviously speculation of what, what it could be, but if I had to dial it in, it would be fire, it would be bombing, it would be April 15th because of the pattern. And that exact pattern is if April 15th lands on a Monday, that's when we've seen every event I've just brought up. That was mm -hmm. the day of the week it landed on. And this upcoming April 15th lands on a Monday. Wow. That's so the what stock it was. So market I was will be right. open. I was right though when I said after Sunday. See, so, yeah, uh, it just and we yeah, had that man. conversation a while ago.
Yeah. And yeah. let me show you something real quick that I think is pretty cool. When you when you look at the Bitcoin chart from that 2016 cycle, I was trying to show some similarities between 2016 and 2017. Look, this is the Bitcoin halving right here. We rose super bullish into that and then we corrected. But then look at the correction we had after the halving. This type of market structure, if Bitcoin was to go up super hard right now into the eclipse, this could also be the way that it all plays out. I mean, I know it's very weird um, for there to be a big drop off post having when allegedly we're supposed to have more scarcity. And, you know, but I do get what you guys meant earlier about there's a 600 Bitcoin being bought per day. It's totally different than it was back in 2016. That's undeniable. I'm not trying yeah. to deny facts. Right. Um, but events do alter the price of Bitcoin, just like they do in any market anything mm. that has speculation people go do i want to be risk on or risk off right, well, it's very right. rare that we see something negative happen on the world stage and the response to the most speculative fucking asset class be bullish <laughs> like see, it's just so it's so I'm, the, um, I'm with you there and i try to tell my audience this all the time <clears throat> to be careful and be cognizant of what's going on globally geopolitically because as you just stated Bitcoin is the most speculative risk on asset we've ever seen. Okay. So when something goes haywire, shit hits the fan, Bitcoin's Bitcoin's gonna be affected by that big time to the downside. So just it always tempor has. temporarily. But I the, want people to know. The bounce back is like, crazy, but I'm yeah. not trying exact I agree. I was just about to say that I would be buying that fucking dip, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. I don't care where it goes. Like right. especially on all coins. Because one of the things to open our eyes to is we're not in a true alt season yet. We're just right. not. Yeah, total very true. two and total very three true. has not broken into price discovery, whilst Bitcoin has, uh, at least a little bit it has, as I've shown you earlier. 7% above all-time highs, but right now we're trading above prior cycle highs and closing dailies. So we, we don't have the true, true, true alt season until we start seeing price discovery in total two and total three. And that means we have so much opportunity in this market. And that's what I've been trying to teach people. Like Bitcoin might not be the buy right now because we're at fucking all time highs. Like I would never touch a Bitcoin at 70 um, when we have so many other opportunities with way more ROI. And when you have more ROI opportunity, if you're just conservative and you have a, a strategy to de-risk or take profits on the way up, then you're mm -hmm. golden. But if, if we wanted to get into the conversation, which perhaps we could do on the next um, next get together about mm -hmm. where's Bitcoin going for the all time highs and the, and the speculation around that, we could mm -hmm. totally do it. But I think everyone could agree, like it would require Bitcoin to do some insane shit for it to outperform a majority of the alts. It's it's never been the case um, unless you're looking at the all time chart. But when we go into alt season, you see stuff go up 2000 percent in a couple of yep. weeks. Yep. Um, and I think that's where the that's where the, the move is. Bitcoin is the market compass, though. So if we're generally up in Bitcoin and we're generally up in the stock market, well, then we're generally up in all coins. And every dip is a, is a chance to DCA. I want I want people to get that in, in their heads, because some people who follow very closely with my work, they didn't come here before April of 2023. They're just showing up now. And it's like they missed the whole conversation that led up to this moment. Yeah. And they, they hear that I de-risked Bitcoin recently. And they're like, what are you doing? You're selling early. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> you missed the conversation. It's like you joined the room when dinner was halfway done. And we're on yeah. dessert now. You know, when yeah. right now, guys, I want to be honest. We're, we're at dessert. This mm. is the beginning of the end. This mm. is not going to be an easy market to navigate as we have this conversation. I'm not saying this to, to hurt people's feelings or to make people feel fearful or phony. No, we want to hear. Yeah, we want to hear just being all a sides. I'm just Absolutely. being a real one. Look at this yep, chart that yep. we're looking at right now. This is the S&P. We're going fucking parabolic. You think on this shit's going to last forever? Yeah. On the S&P. Like, we're at the beginning of the end, in my opinion. Um, yeah. That, I, so I, I that agree. Beginning like, of the end, it, it'll take some time. I I do think we can make it all the way until potentially Q four, Q one of twenty twenty five. But I'm just saying, the navigating it part is not going to be as simple and easy and relaxing as it was before October of last year. It's going to be much much more volatile, choppy, confusing. Bitcoin will be down one percent while one other altcoin is up five fifty percent. You'll see something that was down for 
down 40% magically in a single candle, go up 200%. You, you will just be all over the place. It's nothing gotcha. like the pre-October um, time frame. So take profits, guys. Take profits. And DCA, yeah, when a, DCA on any way. dips. Very DCA minimum, on dips. Take out, take yeah. out yeah. what you put in. You know, Take out what you, you put in. When you get to a point, like, especially if like the asset you own or you bought doubles in price, pull out your initial investment so you're just playing with house money at that point. Yeah, man. Let me just say, man, this has been an awesome, awesome session, man. We we're going to have to have you come back on. It was great. Uh, I want to talk even, and I'm sure Rice would as well. We want to talk non-crypto stuff as well. That's, that's Yeah, I've been meaning important. it just because um, I don't I don't get as much time with Jordan as I've gotten in the past. I, yeah. This was an idea to do something that was going to be completely unrelated to crypto and do something on my other So channel, maybe Rice, Rice we game. should get him on a, a rumble only uncensored. So we can really like I actually I just made a rumble account like a couple of days okay, ago sweet. because people kept telling me to do it. I probably have yeah, zero you followers over there, but yeah, everyone keeps so telling we'll me to jump, do it. Drop, yeah, yeah, yeah. Drop your uh if you want in the private chat, drop drop your link and then we'll we'll send it out. One second. I gotta yeah, find it. And I'll it. I'll drop it in the uh, video description as well too. Yep, yeah, like too. they don't even allow me to make a custom URL, so it looks like <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but I just said that I said it to you now. All right, um, sweet, sweet. Thank you, I um, had a real bad week last week with internet connection and OBS software for doing live streams was fucking up. So I just bit the bullet and I bought StreamYard Premium. Yep. And I'm okay. hoping that StreamYard and doing uh, live streams simultaneously on Rumble and YouTube is like the solid move for getting the word out. Yeah, it's just the, but the, I have the, zero experience with Rumble. It, I got to be honest. It sucks. The chat doesn't aggregate. So because you have to put a custom URL in every time you do a stream on um, on Rumble, you have to put a custom streaming information inside of StreamYard. You got to change it every single time. And then mm -hmm. in order to do the chat, you have to kind of pop it out and then do a screen share of the chat if you share the chat. So. Uh, it has it has some and it used to be very friendly with transferring your YouTube videos, but YouTube has since not allowed that. Um, mm, go figure. Even, I wonder why. That, have you noticed that by <laughs> any chance, bud, that your video? No, I stopped. I stopped even caring because now I just live stream every day from yeah. Rumble because it pushes your chat. It pushes your videos much better than transferring over anyway. Like their right. algo likes you to stream live. So. That's what yes, I do. It, over it doesn't transfer over now, which oh know, wow, kind of, I didn't that know kind that. Of sucks people, yeah. It, so it's but the, YouTube will take their money to allow Rumble to advertise on their platform, but they're not going to allow for the content to transfer from YouTube. But it doesn't. But it doesn't affect Odyssey. So it should show you that Odyssey is not a threat to YouTube. There you go. There you mm -hmm. go. There but you go. Uh, I well, do have on screen Waters Above YouTube channel. Um, I yes. also have watersabove.com. If you real quick, uh, before we wrap up, Jordan, you want to explain uh, what you offer in your courses? And I know you have a Patreon where you kind of do like some deeper dives and have some private conversations. Yeah, like what I tell people is typically if you're interested in one of my courses, then joining the Patreon might be the way because it gives you a 20% discount on any of the courses and they're all lifetime access, one-time payment. So by joining Patreon, you get a weekly podcast that podcast, I cover everything that's going on in the markets. I also review altcoins that my community votes on. So my community does a voting system every single week. And by now, you'll get access to a live, an archive of podcasts, 150 plus podcasts where I go over four to five altcoins every single week. It's like 500 different altcoin reviews. So by joining now, you're really joining when there's so much material, there's so many gems and then you also get a discount on any courses that I sell, a bigger discount. And the courses that are available are a crypto course for those that are new to this market that are beginning that, or people that are just following along stuff, but they don't really know what they're following along. You know, you want more awareness of how to do this on your own. That's my crypto mastermind. And then I have a decoding mastermind, which I just put out for those that are interested in the more esoteric conversation, like some of the stuff that we talked about with knowing the deeper meaning behind uh, scripture and numerology and gematria and symbolism and then if you scroll down a little bit i have a course that is something that i typically cover this stuff in my live stream so i do a live stream every saturday and we talk about health wellness business we talk about mindset 
a lot of stuff going on in the world right now, a lot of distractions, a lot of stuff where people are just feeling nervous or they, they have, you know, their attention is split in so many directions and they have very little focus. So that's what I designed that course for. It talks about course? expanding the expansion mastermind. Okay. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. So I'm kind of covering all the bases uh, on the works that I've put out, everything from consciousness expansion and mindset and health all the way to decoding and as well as with cryptocurrency. Nice. And, and then your, your social links and all that. You, you need to add, make sure you add your Rumble now that you got your Rumble channel on your website, but it's watersabove.com. And then you guys can also follow because people didn't know you actually had a Twitter account. Um, yeah, a lot of people it, think it's a fake account. But, but it's, it's blue. It's blue checked. I mean, any I know a fake account can blue check because they're because uh, right it's here, happened. right I've here, had people a, right, well, right here's a fake account. Yeah. So and they're gonna um, keep making them, by the way. Like there's been fucking twenty of those fake. It's accounts. waters above taking out the O and the above. So W A T E R S A B B E. If anyone just goes to my uh, YouTube video, you'll find in my last YouTube video a link tree link. I've been thinking about sharing that more because the link tree is all of my links as one. Right. Yeah, that that that's better. Yep, I would do that, bro. Where is the link tree? Yeah, you gotta scroll there a little is. bit. There it is. Yeah, I know. It's kinda hidden, but I've been telling so many people um about it and it's like most people don't really know what link tree is. So when I say it, they're like, What? <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's not as popular, but it, it allows people to find me easier. And and honestly, guys, the only reason why I even say this shit is to prevent you from talking with the scammer. That's all I care. Right. I don't right. care if you you don't have to invest in my art. You don't have to. It's not about that. Like, I'm just it's really if you do want to invest in my art and my vision, I'm really grateful and I appreciate that. It's more that I want to prevent you from getting caught up in the scammer mm -hmm. uh, that's pretending to be me. There's too much of that stuff right now. And it's crazy how they're using channels like that are so small, like mine, and still able to get away with it. I mean, I don't really yeah, I mean, have I, that many it, subs. I, I could I, see I, with I, like BitBoy or something, but like, there's nothing yeah. going on with me. I mean, I've had her on Facebook, uh, Instagram, a couple other different platforms, and and I've had numerous people try to report these accounts, and they don't. Nothing seem happens. To, yeah, they don't seem to. Do, just like, just like YouTube will like to keep will will keep our content suppressed, but they'll take. Yep. They'll, they'll allow for advertisers to do these deep fake AI videos pretending to be Michael Saylor or yeah. Vitalik Buterin saying, send, send me your crypto, send me one Bitcoin, and I'll send you two back just to say thank you. Yeah, it's crazy. It is crazy. But anyways, I appreciate you guys. Um, it was really yeah, great to connect. Great it was yeah, great, great to be show. able to almost, yeah, two hours. Wow. Yeah. Hour well, again, yeah, man, I really yeah, appreciate it. Wow. wow, round of applause. Me and, me and Blood Good are wrapping vibes, things bro. up, man. Um, do you have any final thoughts, anything you want to add before we wrap things up on your end? No. Um, I'll, I have a video that I put out a couple weeks ago. It's still very relevant. I'm going to be coming out with a new one most likely in the first week of April over on YouTube. I'll give everyone a wrap-up of what's going on. Um, and besides that, I think we covered everything today. Cool. Cool, man. Well, again, I appreciate you joining. And uh, me and Blood will wrap this thing up solo or together. So appreciate your time, man. Look forward to the next time. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate everyone who's listening in. Much love. Thanks, Safe man. Safe travels appreciate with you, my friend. It. Take care, brothers. All right, Take now. Care. All right. What do you think, man? Man, that was great. That was yeah, great. Uh, if you're going to schedule great. something with them, I would definitely like to participate. No, we'll do, yeah, we'll do it together. Yeah, absolutely. Because, yeah, that you see how it is with me. It's like uh, how now, now you see, because it's like when you get in a conversation with him, and sometimes you're limited with time, sometimes it's an hour, hour and a half, there's just so much stuff that I like to cover. I told him if we could so have much. conversations like once every month and a half. Yeah, um, that would be much better. I, it, I, it wouldn't be – I wouldn't be bombarding you with so much. Right. Because right. I, I do tr I do value uh, Jordan's um, thoughts and, and his opinion on things because he does have a definite different outlook on the way these markets work. And he's shown me a lot of – consistency with being correct and I, you know i'm not saying that everything he says is going to of pan course out not to be true right? i'm saying that for the people watching because everybody thinks that we're just fucking financial advisors and everything <laughs> <laughs> everybody's like yeah we need to we need to trust these youtubers with with where to put our money drink this kool-aid and i'm jim jones that's what we need to sell we need to come up with some kool-aid we should we need to sell our our, our cult kool-aid 
We, we should. should be, maybe uh, we got we got to stop talking about it we, on there. We, we got to start ride. being more uh more extreme and and more uh snakes snake oils men like. That seems to get all the attention. One thing I will one thing I will say that um I'm going to shift a little bit with the, my channel a little bit with the content is I am going to start trying to focus a little bit more on getting ahead monetarily. So not necessarily degen stuff, but I am going to be looking at, you know, trying to capitalize on these markets a little bit more publicly than I, than I've done in videos in the past, because the, the system itself, the TradFi system is set up against us so much that yeah. we need to do everything that we can to stack whatever we're stacking. And I got to respect whatever you want to stack, whether it's fiat, whether it's Bitcoin, or whether it's Solana or XRP. And that means yeah. that I will probably like uh, We you know, oh, we forgot to ask just uh, Jordan about XRP. He's an XRP fan, which is a shocker. Yeah, well, he was kind of saying it was uh, he didn't really want to talk a lot about the markets, which I found really to be interesting when that's a lot of what his channel technically is about. Um but I get it because it's it's like I was telling him before we started um this this whole crypto thing is like is like not just a rabbit hole but a black hole and it can literally suck out the life essence of each and every one of us individually like i've had my soul sucked out of me so many times that i've had to like Pause. take these breaks so i can put my soul back inside of me dang that that's she did it that well <laughs> yeah <laughs> shout, shout out and shout out i love i love off new crypto's uh comment here yeah, Offner, that's my guy. He's helping out big time with the channel. Shout out to Juan Fitty. I Good see game. him in the building. Yeah, shout uh, out AI Juan Griff. And yeah, I, I, Co I Coin Yay. We got we got a community launch coin called Coin Kunye. Kunye coin. Go check that, that out. Is that how it's spelled? Yeah, Kunye. It was like Kunye. Kunye. Oh, not Kunye, but yeah, we're drinking the Kunye. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I want to use to define for me because there's a lot of like racial terms, like for white people, they'll, they'll use like honky and cracker. The the term coon is is a racial term for like, yeah, it is for black people. But you, yeah. you were using it in reference to to Jeff Jesse Lee Peterson. So how do you define what a what a oh coon he's a coon is? oh he's what, a coon. Well, what is it? How do you define what a coon a coon is, is like a and I, I don't think we, I don't, I don't believe this about Kanye, but you know, we're just running with it with a joke. But a lot of people think he sold out, right? He's not, he's not for the black community and and all that. So when I think of the guy you're talking about, I forgot his name. What is his name? Jesse Lee Peterson. J J yeah, Peterson. He's a coon, but he's a straight up coon. Like he hates black. He he hates himself. So like, is a coon like a uh, like an Uncle Tom? Yes. So it's it's yeah. a it's a it's a traitor to the black people. You cooning, you cooning, yeah, like you know. So it's not just like calling. Yeah, it's real though. Yeah, it's, it's not real. just a racial term for a black person. It's a it's a. It racial is. Term for it a is. But it's who hates other black people. <laughs> so it is okay. From my understanding, it is a racial tor term towards black people that maybe racist white people would say or use right but, black but people i feel would use it as a way but i feel like as, at, at least from my understanding and how i perceived it growing up if your friend or some black person is is basically pandering to maybe the white community more than they're they are the black community you're cooning stop why so are you like, cooning would, would <laughs> i don't know this is too stereotypical um <laughs> What was his name? Tap uh, dancing. There you go, Crypto Carl, Society. Carl, yeah, well, that's what tap dancing. Carlton from Fresh. Yeah, Park. yeah, he's a he was a coon in, in okay. his character a little bit. Yeah, okay. a little bit. Now, now I understand. I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe I have I, a wrong I, interpretation. I was having trouble sleeping know. last night because I was thinking about this, and it was just on my brain. <laughs> I was like, well, what? What exactly is this coon? Yeah, you probably, if you're white, you don't want to promote uh, you buying Kunye Kunye West coin. I mean, I don't know. Whatever. Hey, we have If you're black, you can talk about uh board ape, I guess, right? Yeah, you're right. With exactly. With all the Nazi and racist stuff and all that. Yeah. Uh exactly. yeah, it's pretty it's 
So what do you got coming no, up? You I, got any more streams today? You got what? Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm gonna do a stream, a trading stream. Give everyone an update on the markets. It looks like we're we're rallying a little bit. So I got to update everyone. I want to just make sure update your sheet too with all these uh, memberships you had today. I shout did. Out to everybody. I did. Yeah, I did. I and shout also, out to in case people don't know. Yesterday was Blood's birthday. So happy yes. late birthday to Blood. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I got everyone who who gave a super chat today. Uh, AI Griff memories uh, with Mike. And I just want to drive this point home because I only have, I think, eight people that have signed up with Blowfin. There's a link in the description of my video for you to sign up for Blowfin. You're going to need that UID number from Blowfin Exchange to participate this Friday for the $100 that I'm giving away. So I only have like eight people that have uh, signed up. So what a lot of people are not. It's an exchange. It's okay. actually ex the, an exchange that uh, Discover Discover Crypto is using. They have partnered with them. Okay. Um, a while back, so they reached to out them to out. me. I am thinking about working with some exchanges, and I do want to do like a video with you, getting you to uh, kind of teach about some leverage exchanging. Yeah, we like can do that. that. Tutorial uh, videos do pretty here. well. Let's see. let's see. I want mm -hmm. to try to get this thing pulled up on screen. Where are you at? Here we are. I'm using Google. Juan Fitty says, you, oh, you motherfuckers always make shit about surface level skin tone. <laughs> what, what? Repeat that. Juan Fitty said, you motherfuckers always make shit about surface level skin tone. You see this? That's funny. SV, okay, live. FTX, 25 years in prison. See? He got, he got, more, time. He got more time than you said. He got you five more 10. years. You said no, like I thought, 10. I thought I said 20. I'm pretty sure you said like 10. If you said 20. I said I think I said 20. But now 25 is appropriate because how old is he? 30. I said okay. 20 because I said he would get out at 50. Yeah. But there you go. Out, he'll get, I'm he'll close. Get out, he'll get out before that because he'll get probation. Obviously, he's not in fair time. I think you got to do like 80 something. 80% 80 of it? Yeah. So I don't know. It's still a lot. He's going to be in there for a while. I wonder if he'll oh, start yeah. an. I wonder Good. if he'll start an exchange. <laughs> no, he should be. He definitely he'll, should. He'll be. start running up the shops and shit. He'll you'll be the guy you're buying. Chloe your, uh, Dior, thank you, thank you, sweet, thank you, thank you for the happy birthdays. Thank you, thank you. We appreciate everybody yeah. taking the time to tune in, man. Yeah, this, this, man. Honestly, bro, this is a good one. A lot of people saying best, one of the best streams. But we do when we collab and have people on. They're always we we make movies, man. We make movies. I'm just I'm just gonna be honest with you. Need so we need you. Blood's links. They are in my video description. And yeah, we need uh, we need you guys to here. support us, um, in whatever capacity. I don't know how how you have people support you over there. Join his Patreon. I'm going to be doing something with. Uh, I want to open up YouTube memberships. I think and just do early access. And maybe I was thinking, mean, you could do some exclusive live streams for both of our members since we do a lot of co-streams together, anyways. Yeah. I was thinking we could do that and then i have um so i got i got your website pulled up and then i also have your x account which is crypto blood underscore and then yep. people can come over to rice tvx.com if you guys i'm wanna, blue check now i'm blue check i'm gonna now. get i'm gonna get the blue check i'm gonna get the blue check and i'm also gonna get, pay for youtube's uh subscription service and upgrade and all that i want to play the game a little bit no more. no 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 that doesn't work i'm gonna try it okay it if doesn't it, work bro i've been i've been Listen, I've it. been YouTube Premium for over six years. I'm a early. I'm like when YouTube Premium came out, I started. It didn't help. So I got rid of my Patreon. It technically exists, and I am putting up the early access stuff when I'm doing content, which I haven't been doing content really for the past month. So, but uh, normally I am replacing my Patreon, where you're going to get not only the early um, early access to videos, but you're going to get exclusive content and you're going to get access to both of my channels, Rice Crypto and Rice Against the Grain at riceuncensored.com or you can find it right here in the join today at ricetvx.com. And I wanted to start doing a lot more exclusive stuff starting in April. Um, everything's going to get back in track in April. I'm going to probably do like Good. three videos a week and then I might start picking it up back after that. But that's the point. Oof, man, the this point. is early for me, man. This is early. He, he guys, he drugged me out the bed on this one, guys. I, I I'm boy, surprised we had I mean, look, at one point we had over 300 people watching, but I will say that the main the main uh 
culprit of that is your your ex account. Uh, yeah, that, man. That, that check does pay, I guess. The check does pay. The <laughs> <laughs> check does pay. I'm it's loving good, it. It's good to know that. I might have yeah. to get myself a check. E so it, listen, paid. even my tweets, bro, I got to be more careful about what I say now because it gets a little bit more, you know? So, do you have different lighting on, by the way? Because, like, you look like you're extra shiny today, like glowing. Like, your hat looks like it's glowing. Are you, is there like a light down there? Is the, is the window open? Is it a different time of day? The sun's hitting you differently? Like, what's yeah, going on? yeah, it's my morning glow, Rice. It's my morning well, maybe glow. Maybe you just you, you look you look beautiful and shiny. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, what time are you doing your stream today? Uh, I'll stream at uh, maybe about three o'clock today. I'm only doing one stream, and it'll be a trading stream, so nothing real major. And Not then Friday, you're doing your uh, giveaway. Friday giveaway, three p.m. Eastern point Standard. Are you giving away, giving away Solana and USDT. But again, they have to sign up for Blowfin to get it, bro. So I, I might like at this point with only eight people that have signed up. Uh, I, I might have to take the whole episode to spin the wheel because it's going to take a long time That's it potentially could take a long time to, to get to get that person well wow. because they, they they gotta have their uid ready you know they got 60 seconds to get it to me after i spin that wheel bro so well maybe you should like give them two minutes to give it to you instead of six no seconds. that's too much time too much gone time, in 60 maybe. seconds gone in 60 seconds <laughs> <laughs> i love it all right man well i'm all looking right, forward to it uh, i think i want to yeah. probably do a stream monday will be my next stream and uh okay would, and then I, we're going to ladies first. and gents we're going to do a stream hopefully next weekend an uncensored uh we need to figure out we're, we're gonna have to figure out like we'll talk about a topic but we definitely just need to maybe we can just do a general open forum and just have people join nah, us i've got a controversial one i don't want to say here okay because okay. we're streaming on youtube all right but it's hilarious <laughs> okay <laughs> it's well, a trigger i'm looking forward all to right. it all right bro all right sounds all right, good man. well i uh, appreciate you joining today man yeah, and thank streaming you guys with me. i want to go ahead and uh play my little promo video sure. to uh in today's video and if you guys have not taken an opportunity to smash that like button we would greatly appreciate if you take an opportunity to do so make sure you subscribe to all of our channels i have the two i have rice crypto and rice against the grain you got mr cb crypto blood cbtv i love crypto and we have waters above links are down below in the video description for our youtube channels for our rumble channels for our x accounts with that being said i encourage you all as always to be a blessing to others treat people how you want to be treated be the glitch that you want to see in this matrix be the change that you want to see in this world and until next time next time holla Holla. Don't forget to visit RiceTVX.com, where you can watch both of my YouTube channels, Rice Crypto and Rice Against the Grain, directly. Find all of my social media links, sign up for my mailing list, and become a member of Rice Uncensored, where you can join me on the private side for less than a quarter a day. You will get early access to both Rice Crypto and Rice Against the Grain, ad-free, unedited videos, exclusive content, members-only forum with direct access to me, live streams, and more to come only at RiceTVX.com.